and I'm gonna start a new project. So here's where you can set up the, the project as uh, uh, typically like you can pick um, either the, the type of uh, units that you use. Uh, you may have seen these points of PCAS. Those are uh, standards from uh, the print industry, from uh, book binding. Those uh, PCA is something to do with the, the, the size of the, the, the slots on the font. Uh, but I mean, the other the, the the most typical thing to do is to just go inches, eight and a half by eleven. That's a sheet of paper, and you can either choose the CMYK or RGB. Either one works because nowadays printers have a tendency to work in 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 in, in either of the formats. But for the sake of uh, simplicity, just keep it at CMYK for now. You can always switch to RGB. So here's our page. Uh, one of the things that you notice about the page is that the interface is very similar to Photoshop, except that here you get this giant canvas. So this empty space, uh, which is something that we can use to create our images. So you, some of you have probably used Illustrator in the past. Uh, let me just run down a little bit about the, 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 some of the menu options here. So one of the things is that all of your menus are in the window panel. So you can actually, you know, turn on things like the navigator. Now I have a dual screen here, so I have to drag my things over. Make sure that I have everything. So as you, uh, as with Photoshop, you can actually move these things around. Uh, you can also put them in the top panel, I believe. No, in this case, you can't. But you can organize your space kind of like this. Now, um, as far as the, the, the toolbox part, like if you don't see the, the main toolbar over here, which is called tools. Uh, if you don't see it, you can turn it on. But once you see it, you see that there's a certain organization to how the tools are arranged. The, the version that I'm using CS3 is slightly behind what you have in, if you have CS6, but most of the tools are all more or less the same. At least the principles are the same. So in the very top corner over here, you can see that we're using, uh, we have these, uh, control tools or selection tools. Then we have our drawing tools. Then we have our transform options, followed by some paint and so followed by some color options. At the very bottom is the, the, the it's a bit of a editing, but that's not editing of the vectors, it's editing of the page. Lastly, and the, probably the most important tool here is the color uh, picker. So let me just, uh, Go over to the color swatch here. So if you double click on this, you can see that you can change the color to whatever you want. Or as I defined before, you can actually enter the color by entering a code. So if you have this code, you can actually find the color specifically to that. If you have a Pantone um, swatch, you can actually look at it here and the the swatch will have a specific uh, setting, which is this. So those are just basic. Uh, we won't get into mod, um, a lot into the, the color matching, but that's how you do it. Let's just draw a simple shape. So here we go. So if you pick the shape like this, you get a square, pretty simple. Now you notice that the square has black edges and a beige background. So let's open up what's called the stroke window. So if you don't see it over here, stroke. And now we can see the, where am I? It's over here, there we go. So we can change the thickness of that stroke by changing the, the selection panel here. So we can go thin or thick. Uh, we can have rounded corners. Now this only works at the, if you have an open line, but we'll see in a sec. Um, 
one interesting thing about this stroke tool is that you can do a dashed object. So for instance, if I pick the dash here and I add a dash in between, it creates this dash sort of pattern and then the thickness of it can change. So that's a good, that's an interesting way of uh, creating uh, dash lines for, for objects. Okay, so let's go back, make another one. Now we're gonna make, instead of a square, actually, if you press the shift button when you do the square, you get a perfect proportion. So it's basically uniform, but if you, use the um, uh, just the, uh, just by itself, it just picks from a corner and then it can change size. Another thing to do is you can try is the control key. When you do the, sorry, the alt key, it does it from the center. So that's a center square. Now, all of these have these sort of a dash line, so I don't want that. I'm just gonna go back to the default by clicking this button over here. It becomes a black and white uh, sort of uh, arrangement. I can flip by picking this little arrow key and it flips. And then I can do uh, maybe a thicker line. There we go. So that's how you uh, that's how you get the the line effects on Illustrator. Um, one thing that that's just so you see how how thick this line is. It's difficult to see where where the actual line is are best versus where the thickness of the white line is. So if you go into Windows, uh, sorry, into View, and click the Outline button, and you see here is Control Y, that's the shortcut. So if you pick the Outline, now what you see is only the vector shapes. So this is very useful because I can actually move these things around and, and see exactly where they intersect. But if I turn on the, the view pane again, you see how it has that white border that makes it difficult to tell where the border actually is. So typically what's happening is that the border is the actual object, but the white is the, the, the stroke value. So just keep that in mind whenever you're making your shapes. Okay, so, so far we have these shapes. Now this one is in front, this one's in the back. So if I click on the right, I can say arrange and send to back. Again, bring to front. So this is pretty basic stuff. We probably have done some of these already. Uh, let's draw a circle. Again, you can use the Alt and the Shift keys to make either a perfect circle or make a circle that, that's center lined. Okay, so here's my circle. Now I'm gonna change the foreground color to make it like that. So here's a, a general shape that I have. Now, another useful tool that you're gonna have, uh, see a lot of use for is this uh, Pathfinder. This Pathfinder looks like this. So this is a Boolean operation essentially. What you're doing is that you're adding, subtracting, uh, 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 cutting, you're making the, the shapes. The way to think about Illustrator is like, um, think about uh, pieces of paper that, that if you're making a collage, uh, rather than drawing things, you're cutting out shapes. So if you were doing a paper paper collage um, of an image, you, would, you wouldn't you would actually draw the lines, you would actually draw uh, cut out the shapes and put one shape on top of the other. Now, the way that this Pathfinder works is that I select both things, or actually I can select everything, Actually, let's pick these two things, the two boxes. I'm gonna say, uh, let's combine them together, add shape. So now you see, now there's just one object. There's a little button here that says expand. And what that means is that that change becomes permanent. So now all the vectors have been basically merged together. This is still an independent object, but you know I can make it happen. So it goes like that. Let's change the stroke value. And let's make it easy, black and white. So 
Now what I can do, let's try another one. I'm going to try this one. I, I, most of the time, the ones that I use the most are this add and this divide, and I'll show you why. This divide shape, what it's going to do is it's going to cut out every object. So now they're all basically, everything that's intersected gets cut out. Um, but there's still a single unit. So what I need to go is to go into edit and find the object group. Instead of grouping, what I need to do is ungroup. Okay. So you see the shortcut shift control G. So if I go shift control G, it ungroups the objects. What does that mean? It means that they're all separate now means that I can use them to make other shapes. So now these are all independent objects and I can change how they look. I'm gonna make sure that I don't have a fill. There we go. This one doesn't have a fill either. Well, make it black. So the, the pathway tool is a really useful tool to create shapes, just very simple shapes. Uh, by combining or subtracting them. And then you can see the results here. Okay, so those are the, the basic uh, tools to combine, change, make shapes. Let's look into a little bit about the, uh, the way about the, how gradients and strokes look. So here I'm gonna make myself a circle. The first button over here means it's a solid. The next one creates what's called a gradient. The gradient, uh, you need to turn on the gradient tool. So over here, let's turn it on. There we go. Here's how the gradient tool works. Let's uh, pull it out. So the gradient, uh, there's some default gradients over here. Like you can see here that there's a few that are already in place. So you can pick that one or maybe this one or something like that. So you can see how, how the, the swatches change depending on what you pick. So let's say that we wanna pick a very basic gradient, uh, black to white, but instead of that, we wanna use the, we wanna make it white to green. So I'm gonna just grab the little swatch button here, drag it over and that changes the gradient. To change the direction of the gradient, this tool over here allows me to change. So depending on where I start or when I stop, the gradient gets either thicker or thinner, right? Let's say that I'm gonna put another color over here, maybe a light yellow. So that's my gradient. Let's say that I this is the one that I like. Well. I can take this gradient now, drag it over to the swatches, and now it becomes part of my, basically my list of swatches. So I can create my own library of gradients or colors depending on what I, I wanna use. So um, let's do something else. Let's say that we wanna pick a color. Oops, uh, let's pick. Another object over here. We'll make it solid. I guess it won't let, I, it, what's gonna happen is that if I wanna copy this gradient to this object, here's how it works. I pick the object, pick the little eyedropper tool, and as soon as I click on it, that object now has that gradient applied to it. So that's a way to kind of, uh, you know, if you wanna copy the gradient to a different object, that's the way to do it. Um, there's also another tool that we can actually change the type of gradient. So instead of being a linear gradient, we can make it a radial. And the benefit of the radial gradients is that, you know, it, it works well to make sphere effects. So that gives it that sort of like spherical, spherical um, sort of effect. So that's a useful tool or a useful method of making uh, things pop out of the screen. Let's get rid of the background so that now we have just a sphere like that. 
Okay, so here I have a, a sphere. Now I want to make a copy of this. So if you want to make a copy, uh, you can go control copy and, and paste. That's one way. Another way, if you press the Alt key and drag the object, it makes a copy. If I press both objects and press the, sh the Alt and Shift, it makes it, but it locks it in place. So it only goes 90 degrees. So this way I can go like that and create two shapes. Again, Alt and Shift, and I can create multiple shapes. So that way, now it's useful to also, uh, let's say that I wanna select all of these so I can draw a box and then press control to deselect this object. Oops. Shift to deselect. If I go here to group, now these become a group, just like it says. And I can just apply any of the transformation tools. So I can make them bigger, I can rotate them, and shrink them, stuff like this. Let's try something else. Uh, you see, notice here that we have brushes, just like in Photoshop, but this time around the brushes are a little bit more, there's a little bit more, it's a little bit more fun. Um, let's say that we apply over here, this brush, and you notice how the brush shape uh, has been applied in a certain direction. So we can actually change that in the brush tool and you see how it it will change the size of it. So we can make it smaller or bigger and it'll apply to that. So that way you can create uh, some interesting shadow or interesting uh, brush effects. This is more interesting if you do, for example, a line. I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about lines in a second, but let's say that we wanna make a line like this and we apply the brush. So it looks like that. Well, what about this one? Well, it changes how the brush looks, right? So you can get some pretty interesting, um, very organic shapes, organic looking shapes this way. There we go. So other things about the, um, uh, an interesting thing about uh, Photoshop is that you can create your own patterns and I'll show you an example. Uh, it takes a little bit of practice, but it's, uh, it's actually, inter it's, it's kind of interesting how you do. it's done. Let's say, well, to make a pattern, essentially you're gonna make a box like this with no fill, nothing, no, no background. Let's make a pattern by making, uh, I'm guessing circles or, well, let's make some squares. But this time we will give him a, let's give everything a, a color. So there's my pattern. So what I can actually do, I believe if I drag it over here, it creates my pattern shape here. So this one is, what happens is that when I make a shape, it has that pattern embedded inside. It's an interesting way of working. Uh, th 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 there's a lot more to it. Uh, there's certain things you, you should, you know, uh, there's certain uh, things you can do to make a good pattern. Uh, for example, like having these square lines, I, think I, I should probably not have them. But that's the basic principle is that you just simply drag the shape onto the swatches and then you can create, you know, different patterns. That's how this one, this sort of thing is made. Let's see. I'm just gonna check the timer, we're doing okay. 
So um, if you have any questions, just uh, I'll, I'll I'll try to keep an eye on the chat window. So anything that you want me to to cover again, if you have questions, just write it down and I'll come back to it. I'll, I'll take a pause and answer questions. As I won't be able to answer them answer them right away, but at least I'll be able to see them and then get back to those. Um, other things about um, Illustrator. So, so, so far we looked at how to add images, how to create shapes, but uh, let's come, how do you combine it with Photoshop? How do you put a, 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 an actual uh, picture in here as opposed to just working with vectors, which is what these are? Well, let's try to place an object. So here we go. So I'm gonna go look for my files. So, you know, I look in my computer. Here we go. So here's my surfboard. So here's an image of the surfboard, right? Now, what I've done is I've done a place um, over here. If you look at file place, basically a place is kind of like a bit like copy and paste, but what place does is that it makes a link, makes a link between my, my program, my Illustrator program and the object that I'm bringing in. So it's a little bit like uh, what you did in SOLIDWORKS. Whenever you created a, an assembly, the parts are in a folder somewhere, but the actual project uh, is a, it, it can be in a folder somewhere else. So just uh, keep an eye on that because uh, what you want to do is that make sure that you don't lose those files because then it, if you break the links, then whatever images you placed in here will be lost. You'll have to uh, go find them again. You'll have to. So here's another way of doing it. You can actually just take a, an image and just drag it in and it does the same thing as placing it. So it's been placed in there. It's not copied. It's just simply locked in, in place into Illustrator. Um, so what do, we, what do I do with this image? Well, let's say that you wanted to uh, trace out the image, but not the shadow. So let's try to use that. Uh, if you press the tab key, uh, it makes all your menus disappear. So that clears the space. So that's that's useful to kind of like uh, work around and not gotta have things cluttered. But but I need the tab key to get my tool. So let's do a really quick tracing uh, using our pen tool. So here's the pen tool. And for this, what I need to do is I need to look at my layers. So here's my layer. Everything right now is in one layer, but that's okay. It's not like Photoshop. Uh, here I can have everything one layer and then work like that all day without any problems. So the pen tool, if you look at it uh, here, if you press down on the button, you see that it has multiple tips or multiple tools. So the first one is just the plain pen tool. So if you go like this, you can actually trace your way around the object. By dragging the pen tool, it makes that vector, that, that, that Bezier curve appear. So you can go like that. Now, if you notice that it's filling in the that, so I'm just gonna change it. So, you know, the background is gonna be nothing. I'm just need the line. Now, uh, because I, I changed my train of thought, what I need to do is that to continue, I'm gonna look for the little white dot there. And then I'm gonna see, my, see how the, the symbol changes. Well, that means that it's connecting to the line again. So that way I can continue tracing this, kind of like that. Now I'm not gonna be too careful about it. I'm just gonna get a general shape. Like that. And then to finish it, you get the, you notice that the little circle appears. So that's the finish component. So there we go. There's a, there's my uh, trace, the outline of the car. Um, 
if I switch, now it's all black, now it's all white. Um, the other thing too to notice is that the line is on top of the, the, the drawing is in the back and the line is on the front. So that's important for the next step for what we're gonna do. And if we select both of them, so by pressing shift, I can select both. And then I go and say, mask. I have a, I can't remember what it's in the menu, but it's in the right menu here. Make clipping mask. So what that does is that now the image is being clipped. It's still there. The, the vector is there. I can, if I move it up, you can see that the outline of the of the clipping mask that I made. If I want to see it, I need to actually be sure that it's hard to find. It's hard to click on it. So I'm going to change my view to outline, and there it is. So now I can see it. Now, one thing about the two arrows, this one over here, the black arrow selects uh, everything. Uh, the white arrow only selects the vector, but I have to be on top of it. So this one is good for selecting the nodes of the vector, and the other one is good for selecting the entire curve. But this one allows me to kind of move the, the car around to change it. Um, and, and in here, what you can see is that in the layer, there's a group made called the mask. And you have the path and the linked file. So essentially, this is the car underneath, and then this is the mask on top. Um, the funny thing about masks is that I can add objects to them. So for instance, if I drag this object over here inside of it, oops, maybe I should do it. I should move it before. So let's say that I grab this little guy. Right now, if I bring it to the top, Believe maybe it has to be like this. So what's going on here? Oh, that's the wrong thing. Okay, sorry. That's this one over here. What I'm looking for. this guy. Um, right, it's because they're all in a group. That's what's going on. There we go. Okay, so here's the, the little object. Now, you notice that they're in a group, so I'm going to ungroup them, so that that way this little guy is by itself. So right now, it's, uh, it's visible. Uh, so what I'm going to do which one are you? There we go. I believe what's going on. Okay. Ah, here we go. I sent it to the back. So, this guy which is over here. You can tell which one it is because it has the little blue square. I'm gonna drag this guy inside the clipping mask. And now it's all part of the same clipping mask. So it gets clipped just as the car does. So that's useful because then I can probably take this guy over here. Not the image, just that and then change it so that now it it's part of the wheel well. And if I make a copy of it, the other one's over there. <clears throat> so that way you can start building uh, how you create your pathways, your, your, your strategy for making a, a, um, your rendering. Here's another thing we can do. 
let's say that we create another, let, I'm gonna try to emulate this shadow over here. Like uh, the guy, like uh, this, this, this uh, reflection, I guess. So I'm gonna make myself very broad line like that. And I don't care how it finishes. And I'm gonna copy the color. So I'm gonna try to match that gradient of gray. There it is. So you see now I have a, a, a shape and I'm gonna add it to my clipping mask. So now there it is. And I'm gonna make it so that it's underneath the wheel wells. So there we go. <clears throat> so that's how you start you know, you can use that this technique basically to build the the, the shadow effects. Um, if I add a gradient to it, let's go to the, use the gradient tool. Now we don't want the green. We probably want to use the one that's uh, over here. I'll put something like this and add the gradient. Well, this is a gradient tool, right? And these ones, instead of being this funny, funky looking green thing, it can be maybe black and white. So there, and let's make him bigger. There, so that's starting to take shape for my rendering based on a photograph. So another thing I can do here, for instance, I could again make myself a gradient, but this time, um, Let's look for that gradient tool. Here we go. I'm gonna go from a really dark gray to a white, uh, kind of like that. And, and maybe we can change the origin of it. So it goes like this. Now we're gonna copy that gradient on this other guy, like that. Then the position of it, where we're gonna start it over here. There we go. So you can play around with the gradient effects to get, uh, you know, different uh, illusions of thickness or or where the where the wall is starting when it finishes. We probably don't need the white outline. We just need the the dark something like that. So that's it. That, that's the start of how you could make uh, uh, renderings essentially by taking the object from a photograph and then begin to trace around it to to get the image. If I turn off the image of the car, you can kind of see where I am at. I, I don't have the car yet, but it's getting there slowly. Maybe what I can do is I can add a let's make a a giant box like that, add it to my layer group. There it is. Send it to the back. There it is. So now I have something to, now I probably want to change that layer group so that the gradient goes a little bit less, maybe not radial, but linear like that. Or I can try some, you know, different effects to kind of uh, want to get the illusion of that. Let's try it with white. There we go. That's better. Just like that. Um, I'm gonna do this really quickly, but you can, you know, make a window by just grabbing this and grabbing the corners and making yourself a the window shape, at least the beginnings of it. Oops. Now we don't wanna, we know that that doesn't look like a window. However, let's use some of the other pen tools. For instance, I can change now, and instead of using the, I don't want a square corner, I'm gonna use this convert anchor point. So this tool allows me to make this straight line into a curve, and the same for this one. I can make it into a curve like that. Now, because it's a curve, um, what I want to do is I want to make this Bessier pop it back in there like that. And, you know, 
this looks very cartoonish, so let's just get rid of the outline. Just have a, something like that. If I want to add a highlight, here's a trick. You can take that line like that, get rid of the inside of it, and I'm going to select this node and delete it. So now I have the exact same shape. So if I move it over here, you can see that 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 background edge or that that uh, corner edge. Um, another thing you can try is also uh, you can add nodes to the curve. So for example, let's say that you wanted to make a, add a, a node in here. In the pen tool, if you use the plus sign, you can add a node, and that allows you to move this slightly. So basically you can add a node, uh, change how this thing, sh the shape of this thing. It's a little annoying when you have a, it wants to select the background. So it, it, this is where the outline comes in handy because then the background doesn't get selected, only the, the shapes. So by working like this, I can you know change my shape. Uh, maybe move it over here. Change the best here. So you know you you can adjust it so that it gets that that sort of effect. Uh, I'm gonna check for questions. Let's see if there's any. Nope. Okay. So we should just keep going. Now it's 9:51. So um, I'll keep showing you a little bit more. Um, we'll go for another 10 minutes and then we'll take a quick break and then we'll follow up with uh, a little bit more Illustrator and then we'll switch over to maybe MOI. Okay. So as I one thing about layers is that, uh, yes, of course. So let's look at layers. <clears throat> so right now I have only one layer of objects. So if I go about back here, I can make a new layer, but you see how this one, there's nothing in it, it's empty. So what I wanna do is I wanna drag this object to this layer. So what I'm gonna look for is this little blue dot and I'm gonna drag it over. And now you see how the, the layer now shows as red, meaning that this thing is in a completely different layer. So now it's all by itself. So that's how you can manipulate layers. And then you can see here, I have a whole bunch of new objects there. Um, let's try, let me just uh, look for the right file here. So here's another photograph. Now, I think, I believe this is actually made in Illustrator. One of the ways to kind of, uh, you know, tackle this sort of thing is to kind of look at the patterns of light in the object. So for instance, uh, you could try a technique like this. Let's make it so that it's empty inside. So I have a box. Now, in order for me not to select the, the, the drawing all the time, I can actually lock it. So there's a lock. And I'm gonna make a layer on top of it where I'm gonna draw whatever I need to. But this way, I can click on it all day and nothing happens. So that's a good way of sort of uh, uh, managing your using the layers to manage the drawing and, and make sure that you don't affect it. Um, 
So one of the ways to make this sort of shape is we could try something like this. If we imagine that you have a piece of paper, okay? Now we can try the, uh, we're gonna, let's try the slice tool. See how this works. No, that's not it. It's the cut tool. Let's try this. So this is kind of a, it's a bit like a drawing in that it lets me slice. And it, you see how it creates that uh, pattern shape? So now if I fill it with color, you can see that it has two sides of it. So I can delete this guy and keep that. Uh, then to continue, I'm gonna get rid of the fill. Let's make an oval shape. Um, we're going to try to match the position of that, kind of like that. So now what I can do is I can use the path tool. And it's divided. So if I go control, control shift group to on group and see that now this shape, it's by itself gone. This one is gone and I end up with this shape. And then if I go like that, I have my shape. <clears throat> now, how do I how do I create the, the sort of like reflections inside of it? Well, same idea, although here, maybe instead of using that, I'm just gonna try drawing a shape like this, really organic, putting it on top, and then changing the color. Now you start to see how you get, you start to see a, a bit of a reflection pattern happening. How does this compare to the other one? Well, let's have a look. Uh, something we can try is we can change the opacity of these things. Uh, window transparency. So let's go, you know, Go like that, just to get the, just to get the, uh, be able to trace the, the shapes. We'll change opacity afterwards. Something like that. And the thing about reflections is that to make an effective reflection, you should probably add uh, some sort of a little. It's a, it's a matter, it's, it's, it's all, as always, it's just smoke and mirrors. It's a matter of uh, creating some sort of shape like that. And then over here, maybe. Oops. There. So if we change it back to 100%, we can see the results. So those are the starting points for, for creating the rendering. Uh, we can add more gradient values, so we can probably make uh, this a gradient. Uh, maybe we'll use the one we had in the past, or we can just make a new one and save it. Like this. Let's go black to gray. There. And then we can just add it to the list. So that's how you create grad gradients. Um, let's take a five minute break. Uh, write down any questions that you have, uh, put them in the um, put them in the post and then we'll come back in five minutes. I'll even allow the little clock so we have uh so you know how long you have to go grab a coffee go grab some water
This conference will now be recorded. So, um, here's a question that somebody asked. Um, can we do this in Photoshop or Illustrator? Which one would you would I recommend? Either one. It, it's a, it's up to you. You can do everything in Photoshop or everything in Illustrator. The reality is that you'll probably use both. You probably have to. Uh, um, have both at some point uh, to make it to make it work. Hold on one second. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Hopefully you can. I'm just gonna do a sound check here. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Oh, okay. I can hear myself. So that's good. Okay. <coughs> So yeah, the, the, whether you want to choose uh, to do this in Illustrator or Photoshop is up to you. Uh, you can actually take the pathways that you make and copy them onto Photoshop. So that's another way, another technique of doing this is that whatever pathways you use here, you can then take to Photoshop and use the pathway uh, tool to do the selection. Um, so, so it's a matter of working back and forth between the two programs. Uh, let me just have a look here quickly. So here I have some test files that, uh, that I have. I'm gonna give you another example for um, doing things in a, like the best way to do this is to do it on a, on a side view like this. Perspectives in Photoshop are a little bit more challenging and I'll show you why. Let's uh, grab uh, my USB here. Uh, that's not the file that I wanted. It's this one. There we go. So here's a Photoshop image. You know, here's a picture of a USB. Uh, so what I want to make is I want to make a vector of this. And the benefit of vectors too is that, uh, as, as I was saying in the first lecture, is that vectors are infinitely, you can scale them in, scale in to infinity. Meaning that, for instance, if I zoom in here, you can see how this image gets pixelated. So that's a problem because the resolution changes depending how how I make this. So we're just gonna put this image there and lock it. And then I'm gonna draw on top of it. So here's how, uh, you know, one way of doing this is like this, is I can actually, and this is something that I've used quite often, um, but let's say that I'm gonna make myself a rectangle like this. Now, I'm gonna make it so that it matches the gray over here. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab the corners of this and I'm gonna just put it in the right place. So, here we go. So that's the side of my piece. Let's make sure that I grab the right corners. So there's the side of it. Now. Another thing I can do too is uh, let's make a really big square. I'm gonna get the general shape of it. So if I drag the corner here, I can get the general perspective of it. There we go. Ha, but I have a problem because this is not a square shape. This is kind of like, a, it has an extra couple of nodes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a couple of points there. That way I can drag it over here and I'm gonna add another one over here. And then I'm gonna drag it so it goes kind of like this. There we go. So there's a general shape, right? So this one is on, top, so let's send it to the back. And we can see here that the other ship is there, but I'm gonna change the color slightly so I can see more clearly what I'm doing. So that's laying out essentially the, the overall shapes that I need to have for this. Now the problem here that as you can see is that matching those corners is really difficult. So I'm gonna, do something that uh, that's gonna be coming really handy, which is called uh, it's the um, 
automatic controls for uh, the snap control. It's if you go here. I'm not sure where it's in the menu. I can never find it in the menu, but it's control U. If you press control U, you can see how this snap function turns on. And that snap function is basically a fantastic thing because it allows you to snap things to corners. So now your shape begins to actually match whatever you have here. Um, let's do something else here. Here, what I wanna do, I wanna use some of these transform tools. So for example, there's the rotation, but I don't need to rotate it. What I wanna do is I wanna mirror it. So over here, at the second button, it's a mirror. And here's how mirrors work in, in Illustrator. Um, the, when you press the mirror tool, a little box appears that's basically gonna be the, 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 the pivot point. I'm gonna pick it right there on the anchor. If I press Alt, it makes a copy. There's my mirror. And so that way I can make myself stretch it like that, stretch it like that. And I can even uh, give myself a little bit of space to kind of make the inner shadow of this. There we go. The, the nice thing about the path tool or the, 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 the stroke tool is that it works like basically it aligns itself to other points or paths. Now, if I wanna turn it off, I'll go control shift U and that turns off the path tool. Uh, control U, sorry, turns it off again. Control U turns it on. So this way I can keep uh, doing pathways like this to get myself the shapes that I need. And essentially I'm drawing by creating new shapes. I'm gonna make this black. So now you can see how this is done. Come on, there we go. And here, let's say that we are the one of our great gradients. There we go. Gradients are tricky because the, the, especially in perspectives, because getting the right angle is a little bit difficult sometimes. Let's just go and we'll just make it black. And um, one thing about reflections, uh, if you wanted to get the reflection on this, for um, we're gonna try to do this this way. Um, there's another tool here called the slant. That's a that's another useful tool. The shear, in this case, um, you pick the pivot point and then you shear it, and it makes that sort of perspective angle. So this way, it just grabs all corners, and that way can kind of get the idea. Now you can tweak it afterwards. So here we're gonna pick a different shade like that. Now the key to making good reflections is whenever you use the, uh, the gradient tool, uh, it's, the, it's the direction that you pick. So let's say that you wanted to make a metallic reflection here. The way to do it would be to go into the gradient tool and just find sort of uh, the thing that makes it, the direction that makes it look like it's reflecting. Typically, to get a good reflection or to get a metallic sheen, you have the light versus a gray or a dark uh, contrasting surface, and that makes it look like it's reflecting. Another trick too is that when you do the gradient, if you add a color in between, so if you add a, you know, the gray in between 
and then maybe a little bit of white that gives it that really metallic look so that way you can play with you know where you start or where you stop to make it either more reflective or less reflective now that black looks kind of odd so maybe instead of black i'll just make it gray or yeah something like that <clears throat> so it's all smoke and mirrors it's all smoke and mirrors uh the reflections are just a matter of like uh, finding the right uh, angle uh adding these lines you can add a uh, you know little highlights to make it uh appear like you have a more for instance you can make a white line this is the line tool so it's kind of like the pen tool but it's just uh it's just really meant for single lines so you can make a line here use the this tool the anchor tool i make it uh you should make it something like with white and then you can that creates a highlight right there now, if I zoom in, you can kind of see what's going on here is that you have, to, you have this kind of like straight edge. So that's where the stroke um, tool comes in handy too, because here in the stroke tool, uh, this is the appearance, here we go, stroke. Um, I can choose kind of like how this ends. So I can make it so it's a corner or maybe it's a round or a projected corner. Um, uh, the way to kind of like not have this would be to make a layer mask and the layer mask would hide all of these sort of like weird sort of shapes like that. If I make a, if I take this shape, copy, paste, I'm going to make it so it's black and white outline. And I'm going to make in my selection tool, uh all of these objects i'm gonna make them into a layer mask whatever is on, on top is what creates the the, the, the the clipping mask uh let's get rid of the background here okay so i have selected this object I'm going to make it a little more obvious. So that and that. Now I make my clipping mask. There. So now this is the clipping mask. So I can just grab everything that's that I have, everything else, and I can just drag it in there. So look, here you have to be careful because the clipping mask, I think, I believe that there. It's all grouped together. So be careful when you make the clipping mask that uh, you're only selecting the, the clipping mask itself. Uh, and that's gonna be, let's see. There. And then if I move it, there we go. If I show it, there. You see how it clipped? Now it's no longer sticking out because basically that line is inside of the clipping mask so no matter how i put it it's it's always hidden so the clipping mask are really useful for these sort of things that uh you know whenever you want to make uh, uh these sort of effects uh let's say that we add a corner to this so let's go continue this line the pathway you see how it actually anchors itself to it so that's another useful thing because then it uh it uses the whatever the geometry is there to to angle itself. Okay. Ten twenty two. So I'll continue talking more on Illustrator. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about gradients and layers uh, probably next week. Uh, what I want to do though is I want to switch over. Like